Hey guys, how you doing? I uh, thought I'd come on and uh, just do a quick video here. Um, it's playing in the background. Is this guy? Uh, this is a Japanese composer. Uh, he goes by uh, Yaz Kaz. Uh, ambient elements of traditional Japanese and tribal music. Uh, originally from 1984 on Canyon Records. This is a 1985 reissue, U.S. pressing on Grandma, Grandma Vision. Um, it's beautiful, beautiful stuff. I've been uh, discovering a lot of cool Japanese music from the early to mid 80s uh, on YouTube. A lot of that stuff is getting uh, really hard to find and very expensive, uh, even online. But uh, thankfully, some of these, you know, were picked up on, uh, were pressed uh, here in the U.S., so they're a little bit easier to find. Um, so yeah, really happy to snag that. Um, just got it today, but yeah, it sounds awesome. Uh, Stopped in my local shop yesterday, traded in a, a bunch of stuff, um, and uh, yeah, had a nice, nice little dig. Uh, found this guy, Soft Machine Six. Um, I think right now I only have uh, Soft Machine Three, Four. This is my third one from them. Uh, of course, you know Robert Wyatt no, no longer with the band here, but. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this one, double LP, um, the U.S. pressing here. Uh, yeah, just awesome playing on this one. Uh, look forward to spending more time with that one. I found, uh, added to my Alice Coltrane collection. I've been... Had, been having some decent luck finding uh, Alice Coltrane for a while. I did not see any Alice Coltrane records out in the wild, and then all of a sudden I've seen several uh, over the last few months. And yeah, they, they seem to be uh, getting scarcer to find. And you know, I, I have yet to find any of her LPs that I didn't enjoy thoroughly. So. Uh, very happy to find this one in pretty good shape. Um, this one has... My favorite pieces here have kind of a, a very Middle Eastern uh, influence and she's playing uh, an organ. I don't know what kind of uh, organ she's playing. Um, but it, yeah, it reminds me, it actually reminded me a lot of the organ in this record. Um, by uh, Omar Suleiman. Um, Suleiman is a Syrian artist. Uh, he got really famous about 10 years ago. Um, for some reason, he kind of got popular with uh, you know a lot of uh, indie like music festivals and stuff. But yeah, he's basically like a, a tra traditional um, Syrian uh, pop artist. Uh, and he uses electronics quite heavily, uh, synthesizers, and you know some traditional uh, Middle Eastern instruments, but uh, with an electric, very electric sound. And you know he sings, and you know obviously his, his shows are legendary. You know, he started off doing uh, just like weddings in, in Syria and, you know, now he's playing to like huge crowds since he got, uh, you know, a lot of press here in the U.S. So, yeah, very similar kind of organ work from from what kind of what she's doing here. So definitely check out check out this guy. This is, this is a, a live album and I think... Yeah, I, I think it's the one to get for sure. A couple of cheap heat LPs. 
in honor of uh, Bicho Feo here. Um, Sunny Fortune, Awakening. I've seen this a couple times before in the BC. Finally came across it. It was on the Horizon label. I think this is yeah, 1975. Uh, Sony Fortune on, on tenor, uh, Charles Sullivan on trumpet, Kenny Barron on piano, uh, I think, I don't remember who's on drums, but yeah, really, really good, there's some nice Latin tinged tracks on here, um, some more spiritual stuff, really good. Uh, another cheap heat on uh, Inner City. Uh, this one is a uh, Turamasa Hino. It's called uh, May Dance. Uh, it's a Japanese trumpet player. Uh, I only spun this once, but uh, yeah, I definitely like what I hear. And it's like five or six bucks. Really cool. And the last one I got here on Sunday was this one. Um, I know I think Derek posted it in his latest video because I posted, I was asking about it on, on one of the uh, Facebook uh, groups. Uh, really indescribable, uh, very avant-garde, very French, um, very hard to pin down, but you know, with that cover and the little uh, sample that I, that I uh, had at, at the record store. There was no I was gonna not buy this one. Awesome label too with the killer whale on there. Yeah, definitely check this out and uh, definitely want to find out more about uh, these guys. It sounds like uh, they had another. These guys are from another uh, prominent uh, French band from that period. Can't remember the name of it. Uh, this one uh, just came out about a month ago. Uh, Klaus Schulze 1.0 La Vie Electrique. Um, so they're re releasing a lot of uh, the early Klaus Schulze works that, that have been, uh, I think, up to now only issued in uh, CD form, digital formats. Um, so I think, I don't know, if, I, think this, I think this label is related to. Uh, uh, one of the other big ratio labels, I can't remember the name. Uh, so this is uh, One Way Static. Um, that was really, really blown away by this. And the pressing is excellent. It's got a nice booklet, a lot of information. Um, and, you know, these are very uh, limited pressings. I think it's only, I think only press like 100 of these in the white vinyl. And then I think it's like a run of four or 500 total. So. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely recommended, and I think there's going to be, obviously it's 1.0, I think there's already a 1.1 coming out in a few weeks, so don't hesitate. Uh, last one I'll show here is uh, Mula, uh, I believe this is self-titled. Um, I can only describe this as uh, American... Kraut Rock. This is from 1974. Um, you know, it has a lot of, you know, percussive and electronic elements. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, I think I think it's been shown a fair amount in the BC, but I just wanted to show off the uh, original. They used to have the uh, bootleg, but uh, this is the original. It sounds. Sounds a lot better than, than the bootleg, so um, yeah, definitely extremely happy to have this. Um, an amazing, amazing record. So, yeah, hope uh, everyone is well, and uh, see you guys soon.